Welcome to worship. Welcome to remote worship here at Third Baptist Church of Chicago. Here we are, another remote worship service. And I'm glad to be back in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be in the presence of God. You know, there are often times when it seems that we are low on energy. We, we are low on praise. We, we are low on excitement. We, we are low seemingly on power because we go through so much throughout the week and when we come together it's, it's hard to think about the fact that God has brought us a mighty long way that God has brought us seven more days by his grace and by his mercy but can I tell you if you feel like you're low today if you feel like you need strength today if you need if you need power today can I tell you where you can find it yeah I know where you can find it I know where you can find it. Let me help you today. Let me tell you a little secret. Come close. There is power in your praise. Hey, there, there is power in your praise. There, there is power in your shout. There is, there is power in your celebration. There, there is power in your testimony. There is power in your praise. There is power in your worship. There is power in your prayers. There is power in your exhortation there is power in your adoration so if you need some strength today i dare you to plug your cord into your praise i i dare you right now to just tell the lord thank you i dare you to lift up your hands i i dare you to look inside of your spirit and look back over where god has brought you from has he brought you a mighty long way has the lord brought you a mighty long way there is power in your praise hey if you're low today, I, I dare you to just search yourself and plug yourself into your own praise. And I dare you that your praise can pick you up from your down places. Hey, your praise can pick you up from your desolate places. Your praise can pick you up from your pain and your suffering. I dare you right now to just lift up your hands and lift your head back and tell the name of the Lord. Thank you. I declare that there is power in your praise. Hey, power. There is power in your praise. Lift up your hands and tell the name of the Lord. Thank you. I dare you to just look back over 2020 and see how far God has brought you and what the Lord brought you over and what the Lord brought you through. Has he brought you through some terrible days? Huh? Has he brought you through some sleepless nights? Has he brought you through some sick days? Has he brought you through some troubled water? Has he brought you through some poor and some broke days? But our God is able to do all things. He's able to do all things but fail. So I let me tell you again, just in case you didn't hear me, there is power in your praise. So why don't you join us as we worship God and lift up your hands and open up your spirit and peel back your pain and tell the enemy, you can't stop me. You can't hold me. What you meant for my downfall, hey, God can turn it around for my good and for my glory. He's able to do all things. He's able and he's willing. Come on, praise the Lord today. I dare somebody out there in remote TV land, if you, if you got tears in your eyes, tell them thank you. If you got hurt in your heart, tell them thank you. If you got worry and stress on your mind, tell them thank you anyway. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're getting ready to do. Because I believe that better days and better moments and better times is on the way. Our God is able, hey, he's able to do all things. Unto him be glory in the church, for he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that he could ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Did you hear that? To the power that worketh in us. Let me say it one more time. To the power that works in us, in you, and in me. So won't you lift your hand? Won't you lift your head? And won't you tell him thank you today? For he's able to do all things. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. What's up, 
everybody? It is Bridget. I'm back here giving you the announcements for this Sunday, December 6, 2020. Every Monday through Friday, we have the Manna from Heaven prayer call at 8 a.m. to refresh us as we start our day. To call in, dial 712-770-4010 using the access code 618-471-POUND. If you or a loved one are standing in the need of prayer, please join us. You can also send your prayer request to prayer at thirdbaptistchicago.org to be added to the prayer list. Again, that's prayer at thirdbaptistchicago.org to be added to the prayer list. On Tuesdays, the church receives a weekly message from Pastor titled, Staying Connected with Pastor Hughes. Be on the lookout for that as it's sent out via Flocknote. Last Tuesday's message from Pastor Hughes shared that December will be a month of giving. Please be on the lookout for letters sent out on how you can support your ministry this month. Every Wednesday, the youth ministry has their quarantine check-in at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Reach out to any youth council member to figure out how you can get involved. Every Wednesday evening, we have Wednesdays at the Well, your midweek biblical reflection at 7 p.m. It can be found on the church's website, YouTube page, or Facebook. On Thursday, a COVID-19 update is sent to the church via Flocknote and posted on our website. It is filled with great information about the COVID-19 virus, so please check it out. Every Thursday, we have a church-wide prayer call at 7 p.m. To join, dial in using 712-770-4010 using the access code 618-471-POUND. Every Saturday, the TBC OC Food Pantry is open from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you're in need, please come down and let us be a blessing to you. Sunday school is in session every Sunday. If you'd like to join, please dial 712-770-5505 using access code 476-699-POUND. Registration is still going on for the Women's Ministry's monthly Monday monologue series entitled, She, Speak, Help, and Engage. The next one will be held on Monday, December 21st, entitled, Sister, Your Slip is Hanging, The Spirit and Adapting to Change in Churches in 2020. Our very own sister, Tony C. Gerald, Reverend Naomi Mitchell, and Claudel Hampton will be presenting. If you haven't already registered, please do so today. The schedule and registration forms are now available through Flocknote and on the church's website. If you have any questions, please reach out to Tony C. Gerald, Bridget Jones Robinson, or Reverend Naomi Mitchell. This was fun, guys. I got to go. The Lord has given us both the privilege and the responsibility to bring all of the tithes and the offering into his house. You know, often that text in Malachi gets <laughs> over-preached. It is often presented and preached as a, as a challenge or sometimes that brings shame, but I don't think so. I believe that Malachi and God through Malachi is asking his people to try him, to have faith in him, to choose him. And I declare that one of the, the challenges for us as believers is allowing God to be God over everything, including our resources. That's why God says, try me, prove me, and see. Won't I open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. You don't have room enough to receive. That's the kind of God that we serve. Let us pray. God, how we thank you. We thank you for 
all of the things, the places. God, all of the provisions that you continue to bless us with. If it had not been for you who was on our side, where would we be? What would we have? And God, we thank you that your provision is not just monetary. It's not just dollars and cents. But God, your care and your provision makes us safe. It heals our bodies and gives us strength. Blesses our hearts. Holds and keeps our spirits. And then God, you keep us from dangers seen and unseen. Thank you. So as we've come back today, this is just our obedience to say thank you. Little becomes much when it's placed in the master's hand. We place it now all in your hand. We pray, God, that you would bless the giver and the gift and bless us, your church. God, we pray that you would keep and bless and provide for Third Baptist Church of Chicago. And every church that's open in your name, God, she needs you. God, if there be any among us who have a desire but nothing to give, we pray, God, that your spirit would bless them even the more. That, God, you would chase them down by your spirit bless them in a mighty and special way that they'll be able to say I don't know what happened but I know who holds tomorrow God thank you for every gift every giver every provision in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we give your name the praise we give your name the honor and we give your name the glory in Jesus name we pray let every heart say, Amen, Amen. It is so.
of Chicago family, friends, and the city of Chicago. It is indeed a blessing to wake up another morning to give God praise. So we come before the throne of grace this morning asking that God would continue to be with us as we come into this moment of prayer. I ask that you would humble yourselves and that you will allow the Holy Spirit to enter in. Let's go before the throne of grace. God, our Father, our Creator, we come to you now acknowledging your presence with us, your presence within us, and your presence all around us. God, we acknowledge that you are strong and you are mighty. We acknowledge that you are the creator of every living thing, and we acknowledge this morning that if it had not been for you, on our side, still moving on our behalf, where will we be? So God, we say thank you today. God, we thank you for your love and your kindness toward us, that even amidst a pandemic, you have caused us to still live, move, and have our being. And God, we say thank you that regardless of the worst of times, you have a way about you that can make it still feel as though there's some good times still amidst us. And so God, we say thank you. And if we would be honest with ourselves, we would acknowledge that we didn't put the breath in our lungs when we woke up this morning. If we were honest with ourselves, we would acknowledge that we didn't put the eyesight in our eyes. If we were honest with ourselves, 
we would acknowledge that we didn't even give ourselves the faculty of our limbs. But it was only your grace and your mercy. It was only your goodness and your kindness that woke us up this morning. So God, we say thank you. God, we adore you today, God. We honor you, God. And as we come before your altar with thanksgiving in our hearts, we also come with some sorrows of this world. So God, we lay them at your feet today. God, we bring those that are bereaved, that are grieving, that have experienced loss. We bring all of that to you today and we lay it at your feet. God, we even bring those that are wrestling in their minds that can't seem to find any peace. God, we bring that to you today and we lay it at your feet knowing that you and you alone are the only one that can respond in a way that can lift up a heavy load, that can respond in a way that can lift up a bow down head. You are the only one that can respond in a way that can restore, that can heal, that can deliver, that can set free, even amidst difficult times. You are the only one that can respond and speak life so God, we acknowledge that and we ask that you will continue to pour out your goodness and your mercy upon us. That you would allow those that are grieving to feel your love, that they would feel your presence, that they would feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And we ask that those that are experiencing any kind of turmoil, God, that you would show up in a mighty way in their lives that they would know that you are for them, you are with them, and that no weapon formed against them shall prosper because you called us victorious and you know us by name. So God, we say thank you. We ask that you will just continue to keep us, God, and help us to keep our minds stayed on you so that we can experience the peace that you died for us to have. Help us to keep our minds stayed on you that even amidst difficult times that we can be at peace and experience the rest that you have for us. God, we thank you for what the future holds that we wait in anticipation for. We thank you that we're already victorious. We're claiming the victory over the enemy, over anything in our lives that might try to hold us back. God, we claim victory in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in advance. We count it all joy. And we know that it is so. It is so. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you, God. Amen. 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 Join me this day in the word of our Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament book, James. James chapter 2, verse 14, and I will conclude verse 26. James chapter 2, verse 14, and I'll conclude at verse 26. I'll be reading from the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. James records these words. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or a sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat, your feel, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. 
and I by my works will show my, you my faith. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith without and apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works, justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture says, the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and especially the doing of his holy word. God bless you.
shall we pray God our Father we thank you we thank you that you have left your word that is the road map of our lives so God thank you as we've come to this place to hear from you God can you speak a word to your people bless us that we might be raptured by your spirit in present day give us God the blessing you take all of the glory God I pray now as your servant and the symbol of your mouthpiece that you would hide me so deep beneath the cross so that only your face might be seen make my preaching so thin in human wisdom that only you might be able to receive glory God you have our permission to use us for your glory and use your word to inspire us all so that one day we not on, may not only be what you desire but one day we may fully be what you deserve in Jesus name we thank you for his sake we pray amen amen you have heard the text read from James chapter 2 and I want to tag this text this morning a faith that works a faith that works I know that it is December and the conversation soon will turn to that of Jesus but before we get to Jesus we will need a faith that works but what do you do when you find out it doesn't work? No one likes to admit that after years of doing it, after years of commitment, after years of sacrifice, after years of doing it this way, no one likes to come to the crashing conclusion that simply it does not work <laughs> because to arrive at the reality that it does not work begs the question now what and what next I've been talking to James this week and James told me to tell you that you ought to not just stand there you ought to do something about it the philosopher and theologian Soren Kierkegaard summed up the Christian life like this. He says, to be a Christian is to will one thing eternally. James would agree with that notion because James summarized the Christian life by urging his readers to devote their lives to God with a singleness, a purpose that reflects the vision of faith. James believed that to have faith is one thing, but to have an active faith is something else. Mm -hmm. James believed that it cannot be simply an excerpt and, uh, to doctrine beliefs. James believed that those who hear the truth but do not act on them are like those who look into a mirror and as soon as they turn away, they forget what they look like. Today, I want to invite us back into this mirror to look again and to ask ourselves a very serious question that demands an immediate response. Does ours work? Does the one that we possess, does it work? Is it active? Does the one that we have individually, does it work? Does the one that we have together, does it work? Does it work and is it working? 
This is a critical question that gives holy explanation to both the past in which we have come and the present in which we stand. Because there is something, there is something humbling and sobering when you learn that you have been doing something for a long time. And when you come to the halting, apprehensible realization that you have either been using the wrong tools and doing it the wrong way. And when you learn that you've been using the wrong resources and you have been doing something for a long time that does not work. Here it is. After you look into the mirror and you realize that you've been doing it wrong, Kirk and God and James would ask, now what are you going to do about it? May I suggest today that therein lies the problem for most of us. It's not knowing what to do. It's having the courage to do something about what you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not the problem that's the problem. It's being willing to fix the problem that's the problem. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, yeah. We, we pray to God for answers. And then God, by faith, delivers the answers in which we prayed about. But when we read the fine print on the package of the promises of God, and we find out that God's blessings have some human responsibility yeah when when we find out that God's blessings have some human accountability and some personal obligations to be fully realized that helps God's expected and promised blessings become armed and active and deployed in our lives that move them into from into the natural realm of our lives and when we are unwilling to take action and to, to, to do what God is calling us to do and to believe what we believe let me emphatically declare today while you are looking into this mirror that yours is not working. This is the problem not only for us, it is the problem of those who don't believe in God and it is often the problem of the immature and adolescent church and the posture of a weak church. Because you know what we want, don't you? We want God to give it to us. We, we want God to make it nice and easy. I wish somebody would talk back. We, we want God to lay it at our feet. We, we want God to do it while we sleep and have it ready when we awake. Yeah, we, we want God to do it for us while we watch God do it. We, we want an effortless blessing, yeah. We, we want an uncomplicated commitment. We, we want a painless process. We, we want a graceful gift. We, we want a trouble-free victory. But can I tell you, and I came to tell somebody today, if that's what you want, and if that's what you believe, yours is not working, and yours is not only broke, yours is not only does it not work, but yours is your faith is ungodly and unrealistic because I came to proclaim that the God that we serve, the only one true living God who is known as Yahweh and he that I am, that I am for short, doesn't just give you something that, uh, watch this, that he doesn't just give you something without you being in the something he gives you. Yes, God blesses. Yes, God gives. Yes, God provides. Yes, God still performs miracles. But God also needs uh, sometimes us to be in the case with God. Sometimes God needs some you collateral to go along with your verbal conviction. That's right. Sometimes God needs us to bless us. The blessing will take you. Uh, watch this. God needs some us in the blessing. God, God needs some you in the blessing. Watch this. The blessing will take you and God, not just God by himself. You and God together sometimes have to make it happen. And the second thing here is, watch this. We have been proselytized 
and overprogrammed and overpreached into thinking and watching God and waiting on God is our most faithful posture and position. Yes, there are times when you have to watch. And yes, there are times when you have to wait. And yes, there are times when you have to be still. But that's not, that's only a one-sided perspective of what God desires and wants. Isn't that also what faith means? Watch this. Isn't faith waiting and walking? Isn't faith wanting and working? Isn't faith also believing and functioning? Isn't faith trusting and moving? Here it is. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, as we look into the mirror today, maybe it's not God that you have a problem with. Maybe it's not faith that you have a problem with. Maybe the problem is the reflection that's staring you back in the face as you look into the mirror today. Maybe the reflection of the one standing in the mirror who refuses to act on what you asked for. Maybe it's you and you're not waiting on God, but simply God might be waiting on you. And after you spend some time walking with God, watch this, after you spend some years filling God, filling God out and experiencing who God is, you learn that sometimes when I went on a wild goose chase looking for God. Can I get a witness here? I realized that while I was looking for God, all that I ran into was myself. I realized that now that God hid himself in my dilemma, not for my downfall, but for the breakthrough of my budding and growing faith. Dr. King said faith is like Walking down a stair, uh, a staircase, blindfolded and not seeing the steps, but trusting that they are there anyway. Even, watch this, when you investigate the treasury of the Old Testament text, you realize that many of the acts of God were also carried out by the activity of a person whom God decided to use. And it took not only their faith in God, it took them walking by faith. And that's what the problem is today, that we have faith in God, but our footsteps won't follow our faith. God, watch this. Let me give you some biblical, uh, some biblical characters that help make my point today. Abraham had to leave the land of Ur to become a great nation. Moses had to help free the children of Israel from slavery before he could lead them. The children of Israel needed to cross a, a Red Sea and be willing to drown before they could leave, live uh, safely on the dry grounds of the promised land. Joshua had to fight to maintain the land that God gave. Ruth had to be faithful and obedient for God to fulfill the blessing. Deborah had to walk into a battleground with only the weapon of her calling to save her own people. Job had to sweat to find God in new places in the corridors of his own pain. Rahab had to put her own life on the line and lie to the spies about who was on the roof of the house. And all, watch this, all of their faith in God required that they do something with their faith that they possessed. They had a working faith. They, they had a faith that's working because of the ways in which they worked the faith that they had. Walk around the text with me today. James, the writer, asked, can faith alone save you? James asked, show me your faith apart from your works. Show me, he says, because I'll show you if you show me faith that's apart from works. He says, I'll show you a barren wound and an open tomb. Which he said, because faith without work is dead. James is writing the text to the churches centered in the heart of the diaspora. 
the church in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, the, the des- diaspora, was the symbolic world of believers who were waiting and they hoped for a restored Israel. They, watch this. They were waiting and they hoped for Israel to be restored. Did you catch that? They were waiting, hoping for Israel to be restored. Watch this. Uh, the church, they waited amidst poverty. They waited for Israel to be restored amidst oppression. They, they waited for Israel to be restored amidst evil deeds, unrighteous behavior, favoritism, wealthy advantages of all, and sin of all kind. Watch this. Let me bring it closer. Evil prevailed and the church waited. Injustice ensued and the church waited. Poverty proceeded and the church waited. Chaos broke out and the church waited. The wealthy took advantage of the poor and the church waited. Let, let me bring it closer to your address so you won't think I'm just talking about the diaspora. Your health is failing, but you refuse to do better, but you are waiting on God. Watch this. Your resources don't match what you spend and you lack the discipline to change what you do, but you're waiting on God. You, you put your trust in the fact that God will bless you, but, but God isn't sure if he can trust you to bless him in return. Watch this. The church is falling to pieces and it needs people to pour into the church, but you'll pray about it and wait for the Lord. The, the, the church needs us to sacrifice sacrifice for the sake of its survival but watch this we pray and we wait on God but watch this let me let me ask you a question what what if God has already given us the blessing we need that's already in us what what if the blessing that we are waiting for is not what if it is who the blessing is in maybe that's why James holds up this mirror maybe that's why James holds up this mirror to expose the wrinkles and the blemishes that Christians so often try to conceal. Money and makeup and clean clothes may hide us from us, but the Bible says that God looks on the heart of his people, and the heart always speaks the truth about who we are. The heart always keeps a constant and consistent line of communication with the creator. The heart talks to God even when our mouths refuse to speak. That the heart is talking to God about what we lack the courage to speak about. Yeah, has your heart ever told on you? Convictions of the heart tells on us to God all the time. James didn't use this exact language, but but I believe that James is telling the church and telling us today, don't just stand there, do something. James is telling us that, watch this, your faith in God is just not simply good enough. You need to have some active and some action and some energy in your faith. Watch this, you got to learn how to walk forward while you pray. James is telling us, watch this, wait on and march while you wait. James is telling us, believe and behave in action. If you have some things in your life that you believe needs God's attention, if you have some places that need to be touched by God, you ought to not just stand there, you ought to do something about it. God may not, you may not be waiting on God, but God may be waiting on you. May I give you a person who decided her own faith by action of a person that decided I'm not going to stand here because my faith calls me to action. Who believed the best way to find God was in the middle between her feeble footsteps and the muddy tracks of Jesus Christ. There she was, the Bible says, standing afar off, bleeding in pain. 
There she was, an unclean and uncared for woman in the Bible. There she was, afar off, watching the Savior walk by, and she decided, I can't, um, I can't let him walk by until he blesses me. She had every reason not to go to the Lord. She was considered unclean, and there was a crowd, and she was discouraged from walking among. But after years of doing it this way, after years of commitment to a broken faith, after years of sacrifice, after years of trying everything and all of her money was gone, may I urge you today that sometimes God allows us to run out of options so that we can realize that we only had one option to begin with. Lord, help me today. The woman looked at Jesus and declared, I'm too far to get close to him, but he's too close to let him walk by me. Now, let me pause and tell somebody, it may feel like you're too far from the Lord, but he's closer than you can appear. The Bible says she decided to get down on her hands and knees. Can I tell you, when you when you run out of options, you don't mind looking ugly for a blessing. You don't mind crawling your way to a blessing. You don't mind waddling on the ground. You got to do it the best way you can. I wish I had somebody here. The Bible says she decided to get down on her hands and knees. And she crawled her way to the Lord. May I suggest that walking by faith always finds a way. You may have to crawl your way. You may have to scratch and claw. You may have to dig your way. But faith always finds a way. She, the Bible says she got down on her hands and knees. She crawled her way to the master. And she didn't even bother to touch him. She decided if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole from my infirmity. The Bible says that she reached out and touched the hem of his clothes. And the virtue passed from Jesus to her. Can I just tell you, when you need to be blessed by God, you'll touch any part of the master you can get your hand on. If I could just get my fingertips on him, uh, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Uh, the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment. Uh, and Jesus looked back and saw her on the ground. And he said, daughter, thy faith uh, has made thee whole. Uh, I just came to tell somebody today, uh, if you want to be whole today, uh, if you want to be whole from your brokenness in 2020, find your way to Jesus. Don't just stand there. Do something about it. Faith needs to work. Tell yourself, does this one I have, does it work? Before we get out of 2020, I dare you to try your faith and see if it works. That's my prayer for me. And that's my prayer for you. Uh, Lord, give me a working faith. Uh, give me a faith uh, that moves in the darkness. Uh, give me a faith uh, that worships uh, while I'm wounded. Uh, give me a faith uh, that still presses play uh, when life gives me a pause. Uh, give me a faith uh, that walks while I wait. Uh, give me a faith that believes in tomorrow huh? while I'm disappointed about today. Huh? Give me a faith huh? that believes in the future huh? in spite of a troubled past. Huh? Lord, give me a faith huh? that works while I'm hurt, huh? that works when I'm broken hearted, that works while I'm disappointed, that works when I'm crying, huh? that works when I ain't got no more strength. Lord, give me a working faith. Huh? Make sure it works. Huh? I want to go into next year huh? with a working faith huh? that moves when I can't sit, huh? that prays when I can't talk, huh? that believes huh? when I can't see, huh? 
give me a working faith uh, a working faith uh, and God uh, work a miracle uh, do something uh, new in me uh, let my faith uh, lead me uh, let my faith uh, lift me uh, let my faith uh, bless me uh, and then uh, let my faith work so good uh, that I'll bless uh, somebody else uh, let my faith work uh, when my finances won't uh, let my faith work uh, when my stripes won't uh, let my faith work uh, when my prayers won't uh, let my faith work uh, when my resources won't uh, let my faith work uh, when I can't see the road Lord uh, make sure uh, I got a working faith uh, and let me work it uh, let me work it uh, until I can't no more uh, give me a working faith uh, that when others see me uh, they'll be blessed uh, give me a working faith uh, that I can bless somebody else uh, a working a working uh, a working uh, working faith uh, that works while I sleep uh, that works while I slumber uh, that works while I pray uh, that works while I wait uh, that works while I war uh, that works uh, that works uh, give me a faith uh, that works uh, how you know it'll work uh, because the Bible says uh, your faith uh, makes room for you uh, your faith uh, makes room for you uh, it works uh, because God is with you uh, it works uh, because God is on it uh, it works uh, I know it works uh, faith uh, has brought me this far faith uh, has brought me out uh, faith uh, has brought me over I need a faith uh, that works uh, that works uh, that works uh, that works uh, I need a faith uh, that works uh, that produces uh, that makes life uh, that makes better uh, that gives hope uh, that gives faith uh, faith uh, that works uh, faith A faith that works, a faith that works, the same faith that sent Jesus to the cross, the same faith that nailed him to the cross, the same faith that buried him in the grave, the same faith that resurrected him, the same faith that ascended him uh, the same faith uh, he's coming back again give me a working faith uh, make sure uh, that it works uh, make sure uh, that it works uh, I need a working faith uh, for my disappointment uh, I need a working faith uh, for my pain uh, I need a working faith uh, for my disappointment uh, I need uh, a working faith uh, for my trouble days, uh, for my sleepless nights. A working, uh, working, working, uh, working faith. Uh, wonder, uh, wonder working. Uh, power, uh, wonder working. Uh, I need a faith. What an awesome privilege and responsibility to be able to stand behind the sacraments of the blood and the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
This is no small thing. No traditional heritage that we just do with no merit or reason. The Lord instructed his disciples on that last great day as they shared a last meal together. He told them to take and eat and to drink and as often as they would, would do it, he says, do it in remembrance of me. And I think about that night, the Last Supper, as they sat in the upper room, his 12 disciples seated around him, Jesus in the midst of them. It makes my heart overwhelmed with joy, with peace and with honor and with caution. Because those 12 disciples did not deserve to be there. They did not deserve to be at the table with our Lord. For they had many challenges. Some of them had sins. But Christ looked beyond their faults. Lord have mercy. And the Lord saw their needs invited them to sit and in Jewish tradition you didn't invite everybody to your table to eat and to sit with one another at the table was a sacred thing but he called them all 12 of them even Judas he called and they sat and Jesus told them take and eat he said take the bread for it is my body which is broken for you. And then he, after he had given thanks, he broke and ate. And in the same manner, after he had prayed and given thanks over the cup, he told them to take and drink. For this cup was the representation of the New Testament that was found in his blood. As we have come this Saturday to receive communion, I pray that you will join with me and us as we represent these sacraments, this blessed bread and blessed cup together, that we would eat and drink together. Take the bread, which is the Lord's body, broken for us, and eat. And take the cup, which is the Lord's blood. And drip from the vein is the New Testament only in his blood. We shall take and drink together. This is the body and the blood of our Lord. We do this in remembrance of him. Until we see each other again together with him in heaven. Let us continue to drink the cup and eat the bread in remembrance of our Lord, Jesus Christ. God bless you, amen. The Lord is good and all of the time, God is good. I pray that if this message and service and worship has done something miraculous in your life, that here is a time and a moment and an opportunity for you to lay down your life, transfer it over to the Lord, and let the Lord take the keys of your life. And may he take you to places that you hadn't dreamed you could go. The old saints used to say he'll, he'll give you a brand new life. <laughs> and life more abundantly. The doors of this great church are open to you today. Wherever you are in remote TV land, if you can hear me and see me, this is your moment. 
Can I tell you, you don't have to go back the same way you came. I know, I, I'm, a, I'm a testimony here that the Lord can change your life. The Lord can bless your life beyond measuring. The Lord can do something new with you. It doesn't matter if they threw you away. <laughs> God knows how to recycle tossed away goods. Won't you come today? Uh, the doors are open to you. And can I say, we don't just want you to become a member of the church. We want you to become fellow disciples of Jesus Christ. We want you to become disciples so that we might have earnest fellowship and apostleship and discipleship. The, day, the days are now. The time is now. Won't you choose the Lord today? If you would like, you can call us here at the church at 773-445-8500, extension 238, and we will call you and pray with you and receive you unto this great house and this great community where we believe loving God is our highest priority. Yeah, hearing love seeing love, feeling love, love in action. Won't you come today? God bless you and God keep you. Until we meet again, may the Lord, may the Lord of our salvation, the God of our creation, may he lift up his countenance upon you and may he lift up his face and shine upon you and give you peace. God, we pray today that you would go before us and make easy and successful the way. We pray the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit to rest, to rule, and abide with this thy people henceforth now and forevermore. We declare victory right now in the presence of our enemy because we have faith in our God who is able to do all things except fail. God, hallelujah, it is so. Amen, amen, and amen. Third Baptist Church of Chicago, your pastor loves you and there is nothing, nothing you can do about it. See you next time. God bless you.